We're getting out real quick. Just gonna do a brief walk down this for now. Private property, no trespassing. Here's the road that people use. It's not too busy of a road. Hardly anyone drives down it. They got a business over here. But here's an old closed off road that went through Love Canal. That, are, that have been identified. And of those 88, how many are suspected of causing cancer? I think the number is 11. I am really, really afraid. Uh, we have decided we're going to get out one way or another. But right now, you know, we, you just can't jump and we're, where are we going to go? We're just going to walk down it a little ways. Wow. Nature is really taking this thing back. This is an area on this side of this fence where I believe they reburied chemicals. Again, there we got a business over there. Shit. So we got some more poison on the ground. I'm definitely thinking I might have to come back here with some jeans and it's about to pour. Man, I really want to show you guys this area. should just go back this really looks like the apocalypse this is what you can expect and here comes a rainstorm doc holiday i'm out of here this is a doc 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 holiday production If you guys want to know what's going down right now, you guys voted. I put up a poll, and I asked how many of you guys would be interested in a Love Canal video. I think I got 14 or 15 votes for yes, zero votes for no. That's enough for me. And to be honest, I've been interested in doing this for a while. So right now, I'm on my way up to Love Canal. We're going to check out the streets. I'm going to try to get some footage, if I can get some old pictures or video of what it used to look like before the disaster struck the environmental disaster that happened there or before it was known what was buried there by the general public i want to get some before pictures now there's only a few houses over there i don't know three four or five houses something along those lines with the people still live in everything else is torn down And there's not much evidence that a lot of houses that a bunch of houses once stood there in a school as well I guess this was a little bit before my time the Love Canal disaster happened in the 70s but I'm gonna look that up give you guys the exact date on the screen but yeah that's what we're gonna do we just got to make a quick stop real quick I'm gonna run to Walmart who hasn't had to stop there and we're in Niagara Falls New York and we're gonna hit up Love Canal I'm gonna walk around get some video footage I'm going to educate myself a little bit on the history of Love Canal. I mean, I have general information. I'm from the area, so we learn about it. Yeah. Not a lot. They don't teach us a lot about it, but, but they do teach us something about it. But it was way back. Way back, probably in middle school. I'm going to dig in a little more, get some more information. But I do know it was the Hooker Chemical Company that dumped all the chemicals they just didn't properly dispose of the chemicals so stay tuned guys if you want to see love canal what's going on over there what it looks like in 2022 here's a road that is blocked off 
somehow it looks like these were actually moved out of the way pretty crazy considering look at how big they are Should we go down this way? No, we used to drive down this, I'm pretty sure. I don't think so. Some fireworks. No, we did used to drive down here, so those weren't always there. When we were practicing driving, we would go this way too. This road isn't in use anymore, obviously it's blocked off. But I do remember when I was learning how to drive, we did drive down this road, so it hasn't been closed since this area, since Love Canal, since like the closure of this whole area. Old overgrown sidewalks. Looks like somebody was having fun over here. Looks like we got some beer, whole bunch of fireworks. Somebody was partying out here. This whole street is fireworks all over the place. Look at that. Looks like they put on a whole fireworks show. Oh yeah, so here was like an alleyway or a street that... Now this definitely hasn't been in use for a long time because... Yeah, my mom pointed out, you can see... Where the curb goes in. Could have been a driveway as well. My guess is an alleyway. Some more fireworks. It's just crazy the way nature takes everything back. I mean, honestly, I mean, if we really explored deep in here, we could probably see some stuff. In a few years, you wouldn't even know anything was even over here, probably. I just gotta get this. This is all blown off fireworks, probably from the 4th of July. I mean, I don't know how somebody got all this. That's just an insane amount of fireworks. Look at this. This couldn't have been one person because I don't think one person could afford all this. Had to be a bunch of people out here partying. It's all fireworks. I don't know if you anybody watching this video lived out here you know when it was thriving let me know actually I'd like to hear from somebody that lived out here and your opinions and what it was like living out here what the area looked like and how you liked living here I mean obviously before you found out about the terrible disaster this isn't gonna be no expert analysis scholarly paper anything like that I just want to kind of give a brief history on Love Canal, kind of try to dissect where the blame lies, what parties are responsible, and I kind of just want to talk about what happened there. And then you guys can take that information and make up your own minds. But the information is out there. It's on the internet. You just kind of got to dig for it a little bit. It happened, obviously, the late 70s, but Love Canal was around a lot longer than that. But the environmental disaster that occurred there became an issue in the late 70s. So I guess we'll start the formation of Love Canal. And this is just going to be brief and quick. It's nice to know a little bit about history so we don't repeat it. In 1894, William T. Love started building the canal. The canal was originally supposed to link Niagara River, the upper Niagara River, to Lake Ontario. But it was never fully completed, just partially completed. It would have had to go a lot farther to reach the lake. And wouldn't that have been something to actually see a canal running from the upper Niagara River all the way through bypassing the falls? straight to Lake Ontario. That would be crazy, but it didn't happen. And in 1942, Hooker Chemical Company takes over the canal. It was 15 acres. They started burying toxic chemicals there until 1952, at least according to the information that I got. So take this stuff with a grain of salt because I did quick research on this. But by 1952, the Hooker Chemical Company buried over 20,000 tons 
of toxic waste, at least that's admittedly. I'll tell you guys something about Niagara Falls. In Niagara Falls, a lot of times, they dig up chemicals and even radioactive waste just when they're doing construction projects or sometimes they'll tear up old roads and there'll be chemical waste and sometimes even radioactive waste under the roads. It's not good. It's not a good thing, but it happened here and it happens here. So Hooker Chemical Company produced chloroalkali products from 1903 to 1968. They were a top producer of caustic soda and bleaches. They also produced trichlorophenol. It was found at Love Canal and Hooker buried 200 tons, admittedly, from 1943 to 1953. Trichlorophenol 2 and 4 is used as a wood and glue preservative, insecticide, bactericide, and for anti-mildew treatment. So you guys can imagine it's highly toxic. Guys, it's related to dioxin. If you don't know anything about dioxin, it's a highly toxic compound produced as a byproduct in some manufacturing processes, notably herbicide production and paper bleaching. That's what they found, and that's what was admittedly buried at Love Canal. Highly toxic, one of the most dangerous substances as far as pollutants are concerned to human beings. So behind this fence was the location of the actual canal where all the chemicals were buried. There used to be houses right along this fence in this area and people's backyards faced the canal which would have been in the center of this area behind this fence there's pipes coming up out of the ground all around this place and i believe those are used to measure the levels of chemicals in the water around the area they have to really monitor the water around here because just north of this area there's houses and people live one block north. You can get an idea of how large this area was. Just as I'm driving, it's not a small area behind this fence. And there was a school over here. And I'm going to have to look at the map again to show you guys exactly where the school was. But it would have been located behind this fence somewhere. You can see where the chemicals are buried out there. So this is... Glen Springs Holdings, Inc. So Hooker Chemical Company, before I really researched into this, I just thought they had all the blame to bear. I thought, oh, they, they buried this stuff improperly. According to the laws of the time and the know-how, the knowledge of the time, they actually buried the chemicals properly. Well, supposedly, they properly kept and sealed in the chemicals I believe what they said they sealed it in was a four foot thick impenetrable clay. I don't know why I have such a hard time saying that. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't know, but that's what the records say. At a public hearing and told them that they were violating the deed that they had signed with us and the agreement that they had made with us when they were cutting this road through the canal. This is public, it's in the school board's minutes, it's in the Niagara Gazette's reporting of the school board meeting. Now, we had, we had deeded that property to them on the understanding that that property would be used for nothing more than a school which would be built adjacent to the canal, not over it or on it. Excuse me a minute, you've got to let me finish. Uh, and that the canal would be used only for a play area. A only play for, area excuse with, me. Hazardous, excuse with hazardous me. waste, though. No, ma'am. You see, you've got to understand how these hazardous wastes were put in there. Love Canal was a clay vault. And those hazardous wastes were put in the bottom of the canal, and four foot of clay was put over those wastes. What about the sides and the bottom? The sides and the bottom are all clay. But there are, there are people that leave. say they Excuse are not me. even covered. Th those people are not prepared to, to state those things publicly. Now, that's not true because I have letters and documents from the file where we went out, and before that material was deeded, we sunk test wells within one foot of the canal walls and found no chemicals. Those canal walls today have not been breached. What breached those canal walls were the streets and the sewers that the, the city ran through there in direct defiance of our wishes and in direct defiance to public meetings where we had with them telling them that it violated the deed which they had done with us. Hooker Chem was being pressured to sell the land. The city of Niagara Falls wanted to expand. After a while, they came to the pressure and they sold the land to the Niagara Falls Board of Education. 
they wrote up a deed for one dollar but in the deed they also included a disclaimer of responsibility they warned the city about all the chemicals that were buried there the city agreed that it wouldn't dig over the canal it wouldn't dig on the land that had the chemicals buried underneath now hooker chemical claims that the thing was properly sealed and it would have never leaked i don't know how true that is but let's just assume it is true if that's the case after the city of niagara falls purchased the land they decided to build houses on the land and they also built a school there and when they first started building the school they dug right through the cap into the chemicals exposing the chemicals and then they moved the school i think they said 300 feet something like that i could be wrong it exposed the chemicals to rain and exposed the chemicals and they seeped up through the hole that was dug in the ground you know if this is the case and it wasn't properly sealed in then the city of niagara falls would actually be to blame for the disaster does hooker bear some of the blame itself maybe so that's kind of you guys got to do your own research i'll look into it more but uh, for the sake of getting this video out right now i i just kind of touched on the surface but if you really really dig i'm sure you can find you know first-hand accounts of how the stuff was buried if it was buried right testimonials things like that it's just crazy that you know the whole situation one way or another it's greed because either it was the city that wanted to rush out building and build properties there on top of this toxic land and they knew they knew there were chemicals they knew there were toxic chemicals buried there oh boy you know just the fact that it's even there it's a tragedy all the loss of life the sick people the things that the families had to go through it's just awful terrible disaster you feel it in the area when you're when you're looking around there when you're traveling through there or if you're just you know visiting the area and you go through love canal you can feel it in the air you can feel there used to be so much life there there used to be community there even if you've never seen it yourself and now it's just a wasteland there's a lot of history here and there's a lot of history anywhere you go learn about the areas you go because you never know what's there or what was there or what happened and this is the first road along the fence on the map but I'm coming from the north side now, walking to the south, opposite from where I was when I came here the other day. So we're just going to walk down here a little ways, see if we can see anything interesting. I mean, this is completely overgrown here. I would need a machete or something to get in there. Yeah, there's nothing left over there, not even any foundations or anything. A quarter mile down the road, it'd probably be almost all the way down. They have a lot of private property signs and stuff. But I'm still going to walk up and see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? They kick me out of here. Oh, well. Not too worried about that anyway. This was all blocks of houses right here. There is one house on the corner over there. We drove by it earlier. But all the houses that would have been in here... On that side, they're all gone. And then this would have been a row of houses, I believe, too. All the way along this fence. With backyards facing Love Canal. So here's the corner of the fence. We're on the opposite end now. And look at the old road. Wow. I think they might have somewhat maintained this road a few years ago because i seen some pictures of it not looking too bad but not anymore this thing's been closed off for quite some time there's the power lines running through here this really looks like something from fallout from anyone who's played fallout 3 or fallout new vegas fallout 4 any of the fallout games it's what it looks like pretty crazy so basically here's my final thought i think hooker chemical company probably was doing things that they shouldn't have been doing when it comes to the disposal because there were accounts of negligence and improper disposal of the chemicals things like chemicals being drained into the river common safety coming over uh, in the disposal line, which is hydrogen chloride in uh, C-56. And for a long time, for probably four years after I started working there, they just run it right into the sewer and then out into the pond into the lake. This was done every shift. 
three times every 24-hour period. But I also think the city of Niagara Falls is also responsible for disturbing those burial grounds and not notifying developers of the dangers buried on the grounds and allowing residents to be built in schools. So who's at fault? I think both parties, the city and the company Hooker. And the crazy thing about this is, well, the city will remain somewhat wealthy, and they did. They always have money coming in. And obviously, Hooker Chemical Company and the people involved with that company, I'm sure they have fat pockets full of fat stacks. So the people that suffered were the people that lived in the area. And yeah, probably people that drunk the water out of the river, things of that nature. People that got cancer and got sick from these chemicals. Those are who suffered. That's the sad shame. And a lot of these big companies, I don't think they care about the people. I think they care about bottom dollar. You just got to try to stay optimistic. I heard in the lawsuits that a lot of the people that lived in Love Canal were only awarded 15 grand a piece. And that definitely doesn't compensate for lifelong illness and loss of life. I think I'm going to start doing more videos like this. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Smash the like button. Doc Holiday. I'm out. I don't think we're going to find any like foundations of any old houses or anything. I'm pretty sure those are all filled in. And as you guys can see, it's completely overgrown. It's just a forest over there now. But there would have been houses all along this fence with people's backyards facing the canal. And it looks like we're just coming up on the business up here. Just look at this, guys.